Welcome. Today we're focusing on a critical medical emergency, adrenal crisis. What exactly is an adrenal crisis? Yeah. And uh, who is most at risk? Right. So an adrenal crisis is a truly life-threatening medical emergency. You see it most often in patients who already have adrenal insufficiency or, and this is key, patients on long-term steroid therapy. The crisis usually hits when these patients um, either miss their steroid doses or face some kind of major physiological stress. Stressors like infections, surgery. Yes, exactly. Things like infections, surgery, trauma, common events, really. And it's crucial to grasp that any route of chronic steroid use, oral, inhaled, injectable, even topical, can suppress the body's own system. The HPA axis. The so hypothalamo-pituitary-adrenal axis, yes. That suppression directly bumps up the risk. So it's not just about Addison's disease. Anyone on prolonged steroids is potentially at risk. It's a broader group than many realize. That definitely broadens the picture. Yeah. So how does that long-term steroid use actually you know, lead to this dangerous situation? What's happening inside the body? Well, when someone takes external steroids for a long time, it basically tells the body to stop making its own cortisol. It's that negative feedback loop on the hypothalamo-pituitary-adrenal axis we just mentioned. The real problem starts when the body faces extra stress. Mm. Normally, you'd get a cortisol surge to cope. But the system's offline, essentially. Pretty much. Because the axis is suppressed, that necessary cortisol surge just can't happen, and that failure triggers the crisis. Physiologically, the lack of cortisol messes things up quickly. It impairs vasoconstriction. Meaning blood pressure drops. Right. The body can't maintain blood pressure effectively, leading to hemodynamic instability, uh, severe hypotension. It also disrupts metabolic functions, so the risk of hypoglycemia, dangerously low blood sugar, goes way up. And it affects electrolytes. You often see hyponatremia, low sodium, and hyperkalemia, high potassium, especially if it's primary adrenal insufficiency. Okay. Plus, it suppresses the inflammatory response, which sounds maybe counterintuitive, but that actually increases the risk of severe shock and organ dysfunction. Clinically, it can start subtly, you know, mild symptoms, but it can rapidly progress to cardiovascular collapse, even coma, if you don't treat it. So a really rapid multi-system failure all because there isn't a cortisol. Uh -huh. Given how fast it can move, what do the immediate signs healthcare providers need to be looking for? What does it actually look like? You need to be super alert for a combination of things that can worsen alarmingly fast. Key signs often include just profound fatigue, really severe weakness. Patients might have significant nausea, vomiting, bad abdominal pain, hemodynamically look for that hypotension or even outright shock. And neurologically. Confusion. Yes, confusion, disorientation, a lowered level of consciousness. That's common. Metabolically, hypoglycemia is a big one. And again, hyperkalemia if it's primary insufficiency. Dehydration is common too, along with other electrolyte disturbances. In the worst cases, yeah, sudden collapse or loss of consciousness. And what might trigger it? You mentioned missed doses. Right, missed doses or things like a new infection, trauma, surgery, even just stopping steroids abruptly. The critical thing is symptoms might seem vague at first, but they can escalate extremely quickly. Recognizing it early is absolutely life-saving. You keep stressing that speed. Yeah. So how do you diagnose it? Is there a test we need to wait for? Okay, this is probably the most critical point. Clinical diagnosis is everything. You absolutely cannot delay treatment to wait for lab confirmation if you suspect an adrenal crisis. Your strong clinical suspicion, based on how the patient looks and their history, that has to trigger immediate action. But you still draw labs. Oh, yes. You should draw blood before giving steroids if possible. Get baseline cortisol, ACTH, glucose, sodium, potassium. But and I can't say this enough, urgent therapy must not wait for those results. What really helps with the diagnosis is a history. Are they on steroids? Any recent stressors? Did they miss doses? That history, plus the acute signs, that's what drives your immediate decision. That emphasis on acting first, thinking second almost, is so vital here. Yeah. So once you suspect it, what are those immediate life-saving steps? Let's walk through the emergency protocol. Absolutely. Commit this to memory. Immediate treatment saves lives. Start at the very first suspicion. Here's the protocol, step by step. First, non-negotiable, hydrocortisone. Give 100 milligrams intravenous or intramuscular. That's the immediate bolus. 100 milligrams IV or IM right away. Correct. Then you continue with 200 milligrams over the next 24 hours. You can do that as a continuous intravenous infusion or give 50 milligrams IV or IM every six hours. And for kids. It's weight-based. Generally, 25 milligrams for infants, 50 milligrams for kids aged 1 to 5, and 100 milligrams for kids over 6. But always check specific pediatric guidelines. Okay. 
Hydrocortisone first. What's next? Second, fluid resuscitation. Start rapid rehydration immediately. Use intravenous 0.9% sodium chloride normal saline. At the same time, check for and treat hypoglycemia and correct any other electrolyte problems you find, like low sodium or high potassium. Right, fluids and electrolytes. Third, treat the trigger. While you're doing all this, you have to manage whatever precipitated the crisis. Treat the infection, manage the trauma, whatever the underlying cause is. Makes sense. Get the steroids in, fix the fluids, address the cause. And fourth, monitor closely. Frequent checks are essential. Watch hemodynamics, blood pressure, heart rate. Look for symptom resolution. Are they becoming more alert? Is the nausea easing? The whole protocol is about swift, integrated action. That's a very clear plan for the emergency. But looking beyond that immediate crisis, what about preventing future ones? and, you know, helping patients manage their own risk. Yeah, prevention and patient education are just as crucial as the emergency stuff. First, always tell patients never to stop steroids abruptly after long-term use. Always taper gradually. Give that HPA access time to wake up. Second, thorough education for patients and families on sick day rules and stress dosing. What does that mean? Like what to do if they get a cold or the flu. Exactly. Teach them the warning signs of a crisis, nausea, fatigue, and what to do. Third, issue emergency kits. These should have injectable hydrocortisone, and you need to show them, or a caregiver, exactly how to self-inject in an emergency. Hands-on training. Absolutely critical. Fourth, encourage medical alert information. A bracelet, a wallet card, something first responders will see. And then there are specific guidelines for when they do get sick. For moderate illness like a fever, minor infection, a small procedure, they should generally double their usual daily steroid dose until they're better. Double the dose for moderate stress. Yes. And for severe stress, think major infection like pneumonia, major surgery, bad trauma. The rule is immediate hydrocortisone, 100 milligrams intramuscularly or intravenously, and then follow those sick day rules carefully, which usually involves continuing higher doses and seeking medical attention. For instance, someone usually on 5 milligrams of hydrocortisone daily gets a fever over 1011. They need to immediately go up to 10 milligrams per day. That simple adjustment can prevent a full-blown crisis. It's really about empowering them with knowledge and tools. This comprehensive approach seems key. So looking at the outcomes, what's a prognosis usually like? And what's the single biggest takeaway for providers listening today? Well, the good news is, with prompt recognition and the right treatment, patients usually recover quickly and fully, but, and it's a big, but if it's missed or treatment is delayed, adrenal crisis can definitely be fatal, usually from shock or severe metabolic problems. So the ultimate takeaway, the thing we really need to hammer home, is that good patient education combined with provider awareness, that drastically cuts the risk, the complications, the mortality. So vigilance and education are key. Absolutely. For every clinician, remember, any patient on long-term steroids is at risk. doesn't matter why they're on them. Keep that high index of suspicion. Treat immediately if you suspect it. Don't wait. And educate your patients thoroughly about their condition, the risks, and those crucial sick day rules. These actions genuinely save lives. Thank you for joining us for this discussion. Until next time, stay informed and stay prepared.